जय सीता राम अयोध्या कांड चैप्टर एट इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर वी सॉ हाउ मंथरा टेल्स कैकी दैट शी इज एक्चुअली इन एब्सोल्यूट रोइन एंड देन मंथरा आल्सो लिसन्स टू हाउ कैकी रिफ्यूट्स ऑल ऑफ दीज बाय एक्सपैंडिंग द मैनिफोल्ड क्वालिटीज ऑफ लॉर्ड रामा and in this section we are going to see mantra's vehement protest against kaiki's nobility verse 20 kaiki vachanam shrutva mantra brisha dukkita dirgam ushnam nahishvasya kaiki idam abravit Kaiki's noble defense of Rama filled Mantra with wilder fears and deeper sorrow. She sighed long and hot and replied, "Verse twenty-one, Anartha Darshini, Morkyan Atmanam Avabuddhese, Shoka Vyasana Vistirne Majjanti Dukkha Sagare." O oh, jaundiced eye that sees good and evil your feeble intellect stands in the way of your realizing the deep and shoreless ocean of misery wherein you are sunk so mantra is very poetic <laughs> you can see that she is saying murkhyat due to your foolishness she calls kaike anartha darshini the one who is not capable of seeing truth न अव बुद्ध्य से यू डू नॉट नो एंड देन दुख सा गे यू आर मज्जंती दैट मीन्स यू आर बींग इमर्स इन दी ओशन ऑफ सॉरो शो के व्यसन विस्तीर्ण ने फिल्ड विद मिसरी एंड डेंजर सो शी इज रिपीटिंग द सेम टर्म शो का दुख न अवबुद्ध्य से शी सेंग दट यू डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द दुख सागरे द शोक व्यसन विस्तीर ने शी यू आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द डेप्थ ऑफ सॉरो द डेप्थ ऑफ मिजरी द डेप्थ ऑफ डेंजर इन विच यू आर संक बिकॉज यू आर बींग वेरी फूलिश मूर्खयात यू आर बींग वेरी फूलिश and because of that you are not able to see the sorrow and misery in which you are actually plunged in verse 22 bhavita ragavo raja ragavasyanu yahasutah rajavamsha tu kaike bharat parihasyate Bharata cheated of his lawful rights and exiled from the fair Koshla alas what a pitiful sight what wise acre assured you that Bharata will succeed to the throne when Rama has worn it for a hundred years the rising sun will see Rama seated on the throne of the Ikshvakus and then his son will succeed him by right so Bharata need never dream of the royal crown You are quick enough to defend Rama and work yourself up unto unreasonable wrath when a poor creature like myself tries honestly to open your eyes to the truth. Verse twenty-three. Nahi ragnya ha suta ha sarve ragnya tishtanti bhamini sthapya maneshu sarveshu su mahan anayo bhavet. Not all sons of a king sit upon the father's throne. If so, wild anarchy and tumult will wreck the kingdom. Verse twenty-four. Thus much jeshte hi kai ki rajya tantrani parthivah sthapayanti anavadyangi gunavatsu itareshvapi. It is the eldest son who is entrusted with the responsibilities of the government even though others may be full of virtues verse 25 aso atyanta nirbhagna tava putro bhavishyati anathavat sukhe byascha rajavamshascha vatsale It is bad enough that Bharata is deprived of the crown but worse is in store for him 
he will be eternally shut out from any chance of government. O fond mother, your son will be driven from the kingdom. He will be hopelessly deprived of the power and the joys that are his by birthright. He would wander over the earth like the most helpless orphan. Perhaps Rama, the firstborn, is an insuperable barrier in the way of Bharata's getting the throne now. But would you hear of a way of circumventing the evil? Verse 26. Saham tvadarthe samprapta tvamtu maam nava buddhya se sa patni vridhau yami tvam pradeyam datum michasi. Why? I am here for that very purpose, and alas, you see it not. The unprecedented good fortune of your rival fills your heart with overwhelming joy and seeks to reward me with costly presents in token thereof. See, Mantra cannot glean that Kaike is so happy that her co-wife, Sirpatni, that is Mother Kaushalya, is being prospered and Kaike is giving a token of appreciation to Mantra for having brought her this news. It baffles the mind of Mantra. Why? Because when a person is so covered by greed, he or she cannot understand the sincere motives of someone else. Verse 27. Dhruvam tu bharatam ramaha prapya rajya mantakam deshantaram vyasayita lokantaram adhapiva. Rama but waits to get the throne untroubled by rival claims to exile Bharata to distant lands or he may send him out of this world. Verse 28 Bale evahi matulyam bharato nayatastvaya sannikar shascha sauhardam jayate sthavareshvapi and you have nicely and loyally assisted him in the good work by sending Bharata to the distant home of his uncle. Trees, plants and other senseless objects do twine themselves around what stand near them. Even so, would Dashrata be drawn towards Bharata and Shatrugna, were they with him, and it is you that took effectual measures to prevent it. So now Mantra is telling that Kaike herself is at fault because by sending Bharata away, Dashrata did not think about him at all. Verse 29. Bharata Syanu Vashagaha Shatrugnu Api Samam Gataha Lakshmanohi Yatha Ramam Tathasa Bharatam Gataha Lakshmana ever shadows Rama. Nay, if Shatrugna, the favorite of Bharata, were here at least, there is a chance that the old king may be reminded of his absent son, and you have denied yourself that slender hope too. So, Mantra is saying that if Shatrukna were present in Ayodhya, at least he might have tried for the prosperity of Bharata. Or Dashrata would have been reminded of Bharata by saying Shatrukna. Verse 30. Sanni karshad ishika bhirmo chitaha paramad bhayat. I have heard people say that some woodsman would fell a likely tree for fuel, but drew back at the sight of thorny undergrowth that encircled it. So also Dashrata might have supported Bharata if he was staying near him in Ayodhya. Verse 31. Gopta hi Ramam sao mitra lakshmanam chapi ragavaha ashvin no reverse of bhatram tayor lokeshu vishrutam. So Rama would shield Lakshmana and he in turn would stand between Rama and danger. The celestial twins, the Ashwinis, are not more attached to each other than they. And who knows it not? Verse 32. Tasmana Lakshmane Ramaha Papam Kinchit Karishyati Ramastu Bharate Papam 
कुरियाद इति न संशय Hence, Lakshmana would never dream of evil to Rama, but Rama will ever seek the death of Bharata. Verse 33. Tasmad Raja Grihad Deva Vanam Gachatu Te Sutaha Etadi Rochate Mahyam Brisham Chapi Hitam Tava Hence, it is better that your son flees to the distant forests from his uncle's kingdom. country for fate awaits him here this seems to me good for you too verse 34 evam te gnyati pakshasya shreyas chaiva bhavishyati yadi ched bharato dharmat pitriyam rajyam avapsyasi Need I repeat that you and yours may enjoy wealth, power, fame, and all delights that life can give only if Bharata's brows are encircled with a royal crown? Verse 35 Sate sukur chito balo ramasya sahajo ripuhu samridhartasya nashtartho jeevishyati katham vashe Forget not that Bharata is the son of Kaike, the hated rival of Kaushalya, born to inherit the highest place in the world and enjoy the sweetest comforts. How could the guileless boy hope to live, shorn of the crown that is his by every right, and in the relentless grip of Rama, in the flush of his wildest hopes fulfilled? Verse 36 अभि द्रुमत इवारण्ये सिंहेन गजयूथापम प्रच्छाद्यमानम रामेन भारतम त्रातुम अरहसि the lordly elephant hunted by the dread monarch of the forest and at last under his merciless fangs is how rama is going to chase bharata Now is a chance if you would save your son from the clutches of his inexorable foe verse 37 darpa nirakrita purvam tvaya sobhagyavataya ram mata sapatni te katham vairam na shatyet In the pride of your beauty and if you unbound its way over the old monarch's heart you have put slights innumerable upon Kaushalya you have trampled upon her heart you have lacerated her feelings and who but a fool will wonder if she wreaks dire vengeance upon you and yours now that her son is resistless ruler over countless millions So Mantra herself agrees to the fact that Kaiki did not treat Kaushalya very well and if that were the case now is the chance for Kaushalya to wreak her vengeance against Kaiki So once again Mantra is projecting her own deficiencies over Kaushalya Previously Mantra had mentioned that Kaushalya is very frugal and so why exactly is she distributing wealth So Mantra was projecting her greed onto Kaushalya and over here in this instance Mantra is stating that Kaushalya will do exactly what she herself would do that is if she were to have a little bit of a power she is going to ensure that her enemies are thwarted Verse 38 यदा हि रामः पृथ्वीम अवाप्स्यति प्रभूत रत्नाकर शैलपत्तनाम तदा गमिष्यस्य शुभम पराभवम सहैव दीना भरतेन भामिनी आई हैव स्पोकन इनफ the shouts of a nation's joy the crown rama as a happy monarch of this broad and fair earth its towns its mountains its forests and the seas that gird it round those very shouts are the death knell of your joys and hopes pride and power and your son falls with you verse 39 yada hi ramah prithvim avapsyati ध्रुवम प्रनष्टो भरतो भविष्यति अतो हि संचिन्तय राज्यम आत्मजे 
परसय चैवाद्य विवास कारणम द सन दैट राइजेस टू सी रामा सीटेड ऑन दशरथस थ्रोन राइजेस आल्सो ऑन द लास्ट डे ऑफ भारतस लाइफ ऑन अर्थ devise some means whereby you could seat your bharata on his father's throne and immure your mortal enemy rama in the dark depths of the distant forests so mantra concludes this advice by saying that samchintaya think of rajyam atmaje your son atmaja means the son your son should get rajyam and parasya that means your enemy rama should get what vivasa karanam that means exile so she gives the hint of the two boons that kaiki is going to ask of king dashratha right now in this verse rajyam atmaje and parasya vivasa karanam so bharata should get the throne and rama should be exiled this is the conclusion of the 8th chapter of ayodhya kand in the next chapter we will see how kaiki falls down in this trap of greed मंगल कौशलेन्द्राय महनीय गुणाब्दे चक्रवर्ती तनुर्जा सर्वभौमाय मंगल जय सीताराम